as time passed, we have people who begin to question. To question what? They start saying, no, you see, in Islam, Muhammad, may peace be upon him. He is a man who has come. He was not sent by the Almighty. He did not come. He was not sent by the Almighty. He was just an Arab man. And, you know, he took all this from somewhere else. That is a misconception. Some people begin to say, the last prophet was Jesus. After that, there is no messenger. Do you know that the Christian belief, I am sure you are aware that the Bible has been changed from time to time. There are different editions and they know it themselves because there are more than 36 different versions of the Bible and we will not go into there. We believe lakum dinukum waliyadin. They have their faith. We are not here to attack anyone, but we have our faith also. We need to know. So what we will understand is with them, what has happened is they themselves believe that the Almighty will not leave will not leave mankind for more than 2,000 years without sending a messenger. And this is why 1999, at the end, many people were believing that the world is going to come to an end. Some people even sold all their things and they gave things charity and they did this and they did that. So 1999, they said the world will come to an end. Why? Because 2000, you know, Y2K, I'm sure a lot of you would know, at that time it was a big issue, big deal. Many people said, don't worry, we are not even going to go there. But today we are sitting 2011, almost 2012, 12 years later. So what happened? So they quickly ignored that, they deleted it, they denied it. We are saying we don't believe in that. But according to their own beliefs, there was supposed to be a messenger. Where is he? Where is he? Not according to our beliefs, according to their own beliefs. There was supposed to be a messenger. Where is he? So we believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was sent and he is made mention of even in the Old Testaments. Sorry, in the New Testaments as well. Where the comforter is made mention of, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who makes mention of it and he is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And if you look at the Quran, nobody can replicate it. Like Allah says in the Quran, Bring one surah like the Quran. Even bring some speech, little bit of speech similar to the Quran. They cannot bring the speech which is similar to the Quran because the Quran is definitely from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So some people say, no, this man here, you know, he was an orphan child and how could he have become a man who was the messenger? of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From a young age, he was known as As-Sadiq Al-Ameen. He was known as trustworthy. He was known as a person who was honest always. They respected him. But the day he came with the message, they some of them denied it. But the bulk of them accepted it over a period of time. We ask Allah to make us also from those who accept. Then some people begin to say, you know, in Islam, you look at the messenger, they want to Pinpoint. They say he married a girl who was six years old. How could he do that? It's a misconception. If you if you read the internet, a lot of people have written this is pedophilia. Allah protect us. Let me tell you something. Every society has its norms. Every culture has its norms. We are not interested in what age who was and so on. If the norm of today's society is that a woman must marry at the age of 18, she can marry. Tomorrow they might say 25. Tomorrow they might say 30. And then does that mean that those who married someone 18 years old many years back, they are pedophiles? It depends on the norms. Islam does not force me or you to marry someone at this age. No. And it has nothing to do with me or you. It is got to do with your society and your culture at the time. So today, in this society and culture, if you were to take someone who is nine years old, you might find someone very big. Maybe some nine years old are bigger than me in size. I have seen them. And sometimes they might be very small. But society nowadays does not allow someone to marry a small child. So those societies that do not allow it, they won't allow it. And we do not deny it. Islam did not force you. And I have studied that in some parts of Europe, the gypsies, they marry at 6 and at 9 and 13 and they have children at the age of 12. If you Google it on the internet, you will find that. Then no one is talking, but it is in Europe that it is happening. The gypsies meaning those who are more or less nomadic, equivalents. 
No one speaks because it's their culture. No one interferes. But when the cultural norm is we will marry at 18, I think in my culture, for example, and maybe perhaps in yours, between 20 and 30 people get married. 20, 25 they marry. Sometimes a little bit earlier, maybe 17, 18. 18 perhaps is the youngest. And some, they might even be slightly less. No one makes a noise about that. Why is it that now they want to make a noise about that? We don't even know. And the truth is, it is not an Islamic teaching to say you must do this. But it is something that happened. And whether it happened or not, also some people are debating. We don't, want to in, we don't want to involve in the debate. And at the same time, at that time if the culture accepted it, it was allowed. At this time if the culture does not accept it, it is one thing. So I hope we've understood that. They have some other also misconceptions where people believe a woman is oppressed. Why is a woman oppressed? Because why is she taught to cover? Why must a woman cover? Now to cover yourself, how can that be oppression? Because today I am covered. If in 50 years from now, they might tell the men that if you don't move with shorts, you are oppressed. Then what are we going to do? All of us are going to move in shorts. Allahu Akbar. You, can you imagine myself and everyone else here sitting here in shorts, one short only like this. They say, no, if you don't wear shorts, you are oppressed. So the sisters who are seated here, some of them are fully covered, some of them have their faces open. Nobody has forced them to do that. It is their own will. They are Muslim, they are surrendering to Allah. So we believe that in the same way, you see, sometimes people say it is oppression to cover. Why are you covering? I have had questions regarding my own family where people say, why do you force your family to cover? And I tell them, you ask them. Did I force them? I didn't force them. No, no, it's oppression. So I'm oppressed. You know, yesterday I was in Colombo. And I gave this example and I want to give it to you. It's a very good example. I was one day sitting in an aircraft a few years ago. There was a man who sat next to me. And he looked at me. He doesn't know me. He doesn't know anything about me. And he told me, you people oppress your, your, your women. To start with, no, hello, no, how are you? No, good morning, nothing. You people oppress your women. So I looked at him and I said, Ya Allah, what should I tell this man? He wants to fight. You see, he wants to fight. He wants to argue and debate. So I can't talk to him on normal terms because he didn't talk to me on normal terms. So he was with his wallet looking at something. You know the wallet where the money is? He was looking at something. So I looked at him. I said, you are oppressing your money. <laughs> <laughs> he told me, what do you mean? I said, the same thing you mean that we oppress our women. So he said, why? I said, because you are covering your money. <laughs> your money is covered. Everything is covered inside there. Can you see? He said, no, but this is because it's money. It's valuable. I said, our women are also valuable. <laughs> they are valuable. So sometimes when you talk to someone who is foolish, you need to give them a foolish answer also. <laughs> foolish. They don't understand. Then he was quiet. He just did. <laughs> and he was quiet. He didn't. There was no other answer. So the thing is, we believe and you know if you study you will find today divorce is very high across the globe and today problems have increased marital problem today people are interested may Allah protect us we are in a Muslim country we are happy and we are we thank Allah but some other places in the world men are interested in men and women are interested in women you know what I'm talking about now in some countries some of the most developed countries I was reading an article recently there are some people fighting Listen to how people are taking hum not only religion away from us, but they are taking our brain away from us. There are some people in developed countries who are fighting to say we are free to marry our dogs. Wallahi. Wallahi. They are saying, why is it if, if, you are, if a man is free to marry a man, why can't a man and a woman be free to marry the dog? What is wrong? We are free. Do what you want. They are fighting it. That is how the issue of homosexuality started many, many years ago in the same way where people said we are free, we are free until they convinced some people that we are free and they started. So now they started the other ball rolling. Very soon they will allow it. Astaghfirullah. May Allah protect us. So if you take a look at the Islamic ruling of covering, when a person, when there are women all over who are not covered, you have some, they might be more beautiful than others. And you have some, you know, maybe their character is not good. And so they're all different types. Like if you have a motor vehicle, say for example, you have your motorbike. I notice, mashallah, here most people have motorbike. When you have buy a motorbike and you are riding it, you are very happy because it's brand new, isn't it? 
But after some time you saw another motorbike, you say, oh, that one is better, I will get that one, inshallah. And then, and then you continue, after some time you change your motorbike, you get a better motorbike, because you saw it. If you did not see that other motorbike, forever you were going to believe yours is the best. Wallahi. Look, you have a phone. If you have iPhone 4S, it's the latest, isn't it? So if you have iPhone 4S, you are very happy, you are excited, you keep in your pocket, you know, you talk. There is a, something called Siri, you talk and you see and how it works and everything. You are very excited. But when you see iPhone 5, you, you say, oh, now mine is not latest. <laughs> but if you did not see iPhone 5, up to when you die, your iPhone 4S is the best. Do you agree with me? Yeah. There you are. So Islam says, your wife, when you got married, you are so happy. She's your bride. You had big function. You had such a nice place. Father of the bride came. You came. Everyone came. So when she is yours, you lower your gaze. You did not see another model. So you are very happy until the day you die. You think this is your 